hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Welcome to another reading vlog. Not a Friday reading vlog, although you're right, this is starting on a Friday. This is an Easter weekend reading vlog. So this Easter weekend, I don't, I can't recall having done this since lockdown, but during lockdown I used to do a lot of these reading vlogs whereby I would read for 24 hours in one weekend. It's just Daphne just uh, cleaning up after ourselves. Um, so this weekend, in the Easter weekend, which here in the UK is a four day bank holiday weekend, we get Friday off, Saturday and Sunday's weekend, and then we get Monday off um, as well. So over the four days, I'm hoping to read for 24 hours in the Easter weekend, which will be very, very lovely. Now, I'm in bed now because it's just before midnight on Thursday night. David and I have been to our choir concert this, small, uh, this, after, uh, this evening, so we're both feeling quite adrenalised and not quite ready for sleep yet. We also got a McDonald's on the way home. Um, so I think I'm going to spend a little bit of time tonight in bed reading um, Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan. Um, I am currently 84 pages into this, so I'd like to get to 100 before I go to sleep tonight. Um, and then tomorrow, when, well, tomorrow, which is also today, because soon it's going to be Friday, um, I'll talk to you more in the morning about... Um, what books I'm going to be reading but yeah the plan for the weekend is to read six hours on average every day there will be days where I'll be able to read slightly more and slightly less tomorrow we're going for breakfast at my sister's house um, and then David and I would like to go to the cinema either in the afternoon or the evening to watch Ghostbusters Saturday plans are we're going for a walk with my friend and her parents um, and then having some lunch here <laughs> now I'm talking about it I'm like is there six hours each day that I could read um, and then uh, once her parents go home we are thinking of watching A Quiet Place um, which is a film that we've all been trying to make ourselves feel braver to watch Sunday is sort of like the big family day and we're with uh, we're at my parents house along with um, David's parents as well I think we're going around there about one o'clock ish um, and then Monday, nothing. So Monday is the sort of like mop up all those hours, get those hours done. So unless I want to be reading for literally 24 hours in Monday, <laughs> I need to make sure that I am doing some reading those other days. And like I said, it would be nice to do six hours a day because then that sort of makes it easily separatable. But the, the weekend is sort of like loaded with other bits that are going on. So I will be marking it on my phone how much I read... Um, every session um, but also I'm going to be writing it down because this hasn't always worked out if you've watched previous reading vlogs whereby I've set I've reset the timer sometimes because that's just the sort of gal I am um we're gonna we're gonna um actually mark it down as well so this is just a short little intro to say hi that's what the weekend entails and um we're gonna have a little read now of Brotherless night, but we'll talk more in the morning when I'm feeling more awake. I'm feeling sleepy now, but like I'll have all the books that I plan to read and I'll let you know how things are going. But yeah, normally these weekends I get quite a lot of reading done, so I should at the very least be finishing this. But yeah, I'm going to read for until I get to page, until I get over page 100. In fact, part two starts on page. 107. So let's get that far. Oh God, Daphne's going for another toilet. Right, so I'm going to mark in here now. Reading for 24 hours in the Easter weekend. Here we go. Let's start. I haven't done this in ages. Timer, no, stopwatch. And start. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> morning. Morning, morning. I slept very well as I thought I would because I was exhausted. <laughs> well, not exhausted, but like, the old choir show will take it out of you, you know. So yeah, I read for, I think it was 28 minutes last night. I'm keeping my voice down, because David's still asleep. 28 minutes. 
<laughs> 28 minutes and I, I knew that I wanted to wake up early-ish this morning to have a little read before we go to my sister's. We're going to my sister's for 10.30 this morning for breakfast and I knew I wanted to wake up a little bit early before I got everything ready. So here I am at Just Gone Seven. I'm still going to read Brotherless Night. Oh, this is nice actually, waking up early to do a bit of reading. God, I haven't done this in ages. I've done a little bit of reading. And then when I'm a bit more awake, I think my voice is going to feel like this today because of the singing last night. I'll talk you through what I'll be reading over the weekend. Oh, morning! I feel like I can be a bit louder now because it is proper morning now because David's awake. It is half past eight. Um, I've done a bit of reading. I've made myself a massive cup of tea. This mug I bought in TK Maxx many years ago and it is a cauldron of, of tea. It's huge. So, yeah, I won't be needing to go anywhere. I keep reminding myself I don't need breakfast because I'm going to my sister's house for breakfast. But I will have my Yakult soon. Um, I just thought I would talk you through the reading for the weekend. There's quite a lot of it. As I said, I'm going to be reading for 24 hours this weekend. All being well. I mean, I've already done an hour and 12 minutes, so I'm feeling pretty optimistic. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I'm currently reading Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan. I'm very much enjoying this. This is the fourth Women's Prize for Fiction book that I'm reading. Um, and this, we are following 16-year-old um, Sashi, who <laughs> Daphne's just chasing someone because <laughs> she's looking out the window and some, if people have dogs, she feels very protective about the little bit of pavement outside her house. Uh, about 16-year-old Sashi, who wants to become a doctor, but there is a civil war going on in her hometown of Jaffna and um, gradually her brothers are getting involved in the civil war, whether it them being drafted involuntarily into the army, whether it them being killed, um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's really well written. It's um, really emotional and evocative and yeah, amazing. And also mad to think that these things are happening now, but this was happening, this is written in the eighties as well. So, but yeah, enjoying hearing from Sashi's point of view. So that is what I will be finishing first. Now, there's quite a few reading projects to go on this, this weekend. So I've got quite a lot of books out that are on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And these are my priority because I'd like to get the Women's Prize for Fiction long list read um, by the time the, uh, the winner is announced in June. Now that is a book every six days and I'm falling a little bit behind on that. I will definitely catch up this weekend. Um, but yeah, so the next one I've got, which is due back at the library next, is Eight Lives of a Century Year Old Trickster. So this is probably where I'll go next. I'm sort of doing these in the order of which I've got them out from the library in which they need to be done. So Eight Lives of a Century Year Old Trickster will probably be the next thing I pick up. Then The Wren, The Wren by Anne M. Wright. And I've seen a lot of people recently DNF in this, but we still move with it. We still move with it. So that will be the next one. And then next due back is um, Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. You might not recognise this front cover. It's because it's the large font front cover, um, which works wonderfully for me because it means when I'm reading it in the bath, I don't need my glasses. Um, so that's that one. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. Then I've got Restless Dolly Maunder, which is actually the book um, that we are reading for Patreon Book Club um, to be discussed at the end of April. So I probably won't start this this weekend. Also, it surprised me how small it was. I thought this one was a longer one for some reason. Um, so although I've got this, I will not be starting it this weekend. Um, and then I've got The Maiden by Kate Foster of which I'm already listening to the audiobook of. Um, so although I won't be, oh, I mean, I might be chipping in and, no, I don't think I will. I think I will stick purely to audiobook. I'm enjoying the audiobook. Um, the book itself is set in Edinburgh um, in, I think, the 17th century, and the narrator has a wonderful Scottish accent, so I'm very much enjoying that. So I'm hoping to get that done over the weekend, The Maiden. Uh, let's have a look. So I've got 11 hours and 17 minutes left, so that could well be done, and I'm listening to it on one speed at the moment, as in, like, just the normal speed. Um, but I will up it, maybe I'll up it to 1.2 tomorrow and 1.5 on Saturday, on Sunday. So yeah, so I imagine I will get that done as well. Then additional stuff is that I've also got Foster by Claire Keegan out from the library. It's a tiny little slip of a thing and I would really like to just sit maybe outside um, and have a little read of it. Um, I've had a lovely time reading all of Claire Foster's work this year. Um, so, well, I've read uh, So Late in the Day and um, 
I always forget the names of her books because they've got really sort of titles, small, these small things. So Late in the Day is definitely one of them and Small Things Like These is the other. Then I'd like to read Foster and then I also own Antarctica which is a collection of her short stories. So I'd like to read all of Claire Keegan's stuff this year um, and because I've got this little short one, this is due back on the 12th of April, um, but I'm not going to be able to renew it because there's so many reservations on it which elates me because that means so many people are enjoying Claire Keegan's work but yes I also thought this was much bigger than this so it came as a real surprise when this was still a novella for some reason in my head I thought Foster was a full novel but we'll be reading this at some point as well then I've also got out from the library on a two week back loan the new Nikki French book which is has anyone seen Charlotte Salter um and I enjoy a Nikki French and I god the font's really big in this as well Wow, the font is really big. This isn't even a big fonted one, I don't think. No, I don't think it is. Um, so, yeah, I would like to read this. And like I said, it's due back, yeah, like in two, less than two weeks because I got this out on Monday. So that's something else I would like to read. So additionally, and then <laughs> I've got three books that I've started and haven't finished and all of them I've been enjoying. Sometimes I'll start a book and I won't finish it and I'll think, oh, well, I just won't go back to that. I didn't. But all of these I was enjoying. So the first one is Promising Young Woman by Caroline O'Donoghue. I read The Rachel Instant last uh, year. It was one of my favourite books. I've read 108 pages of this. It's about a young girl, Jane, who's um, just embarking on an affair with her boss. Um, and I was really enjoying it. Then I've got one of the books which was on the Women's Prize for Non-Fiction Long List. I don't think it's made the short list. I don't think it has, but I was enjoying it. Um, let's have a look. I can tell you if it made the women's prize. Women's prize. No. So I, I was enjoying this and I read, oh, six pages. So maybe I will forget this. I was enjoying it, but I, there's, there are books on the shortlist I'd like to tackle. So maybe I'll call this a day, or maybe I'll put this on the back burner. But I was enjoying it. Mm. Maybe. I mean, maybe not this weekend, but maybe. And then also Lobster. I chipped into it a little tiny bit. I'm on page 20 um, by Holly McNish, which is a um, poetry collection. So, yeah. Um, and the only other thing to mention is that Doppelganger by Naomi Klein is on, Klein is on the shortlist for the Women's Prize for nonfiction. And I have that out from the library, on my library app at the moment, as an audiobook. So, uh maybe if I finish The Maiden, that's where I'll go next. If I finish The Maiden, that is where I'll go next. So, yeah. Got a bit of my sisters at half past ten this morning. Um, Got a little bit of tidying up to do. Like I said, no breakfast to have because I'm having that at my sister's house. All right, Daphne. Um, so, yeah, so I think I'll read for a little bit longer. I wonder if David... I wonder if David will join me at some point to read... He's just going to have, he's going to have his headphones in listening to TikToks. He couldn't care about my reading. But yeah, so <laughs> quite a lot of choice, but a firm direction in which to go. And I will continue in that direction. Right, I have to write everything down, don't I, in case I spoil it, as I always do. What time is it now? 8.38. I'll read until nine, I think, and then maybe get ready. Slight change of plans. My sister's just messaged to say that my niece has had a runny poo this morning <laughs> and has been sick. So I FaceTimed her. She was very upset at the thought of us not coming round. She's already had to cancel plans with her friends this afternoon. But apart from that, she felt she was fine. So we're going to leave it an hour or so and just see how things are. So I'm about to have a bowl of granola. Then I think we're going to have daytime baths do a bit more reading, and I think I'll film my q and I was gonna do a spring Q&A, so I think I'll film that. And then we'll think about going round there. If not, maybe I'll have my parents here for lunch. Um, but yeah, we're gonna see what happens. Stretch! But a bit more reading, I think, while David makes me tea and granola. What did you just say, David? Um, I've just been in at the bedroom and somebody has A made the bed and there's a little bulge underneath it so maybe somebody's come to visit you. The Easter Bunny's been? Maybe. <laughs> the Easter Bunny's been with some very unusual Easter presents. Very unusual. Shall we go and see them then? If you want. If you really want to film it. 
Well, David, I think the Easter Bunny's been for you as well. No. But he left them here. He left them where? Here. Oh. Let's go into bed. There's Easter presents. Oh. If you'd like to have a little open of those, David. Oops. I think these might be. Oh. David literally picked these out oh, himself. So. What a surprise! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that nice? Thank you, Easter Bunny. And there's a little bulge here with yeah. some Easter presents. Oh. <laughs> well, why have you got me a colour catcher? I already have a colour catcher. Oh, I thought you said it was running out. No, I've got two. I mean, lovely. This I'm very excited about. This is a scrub mummy in the shape of a chick. <laughs> And I've got, I've wanted this for ages. This is a little, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the most random. I've needed a little funnel for ages. This is a good funnel because it, 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 it is a very good funnel. Well done. It's not a moon cup. No, it does look like a moon cup. And just so I don't eat David's eggs, he's got me some mini, a mini egg egg and a, thank you. This is, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is completely unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Because I avoid those because they're single use only, David. So oh. that's why I've got a replaceable one. But I mean, <laughs> nice of you to thought of me. But I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a collection of prezzies, eh? I'm delighted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you like yours, do you? Yeah. I like what I picked. I'm very happy. Thank you, Easter Bunny. <sighs> well, I'm doing very well, guys. I've read for just over three hours and it's just gone 11 o'clock. So I've just had my longest sesh of reading, um, which has been just, I think it's an hour and six minutes. And that was me having a bath, getting ready and then setting up because I'm sat in front of here because I'm about to film a Q&A video. Um, David's in the bath and we've still got designs to get to my sister's for 12 o'clock. So yeah, I'm about to film that. That will probably take quite a long time actually. We had quite a lot of questions on the old Q&A. Um, so yeah, so that's about to happen next. So I, if I do get any more reading done before I go to my sister's, it will be a matter of minutes. But still, halfway through my reading for today, but like I said, busy Saturday and Sunday. So any extra work I can do today will chip into Saturday and Sunday. So chip diddy chip, let's film the Q&A, which won't be up yet. <laughs> so enjoy when that comes up. Sunday, I think that'll be up. Enjoy it on Sunday. Hello. We're back from my sister's. It was lovely. And my sister got me some tulips and my mum got me some daffodils. So I'm just putting them all in one place. No more reading has been done. And we're shortly heading out to watch um, Ghostbusters, which is on at five. It's ten past four, so my dad's coming to collect us shortly. So probably no more reading's going to be done at all, actually. Until we get home. And then I've got to fit in... Sorry, I was trying to close the door. And then I've got to fit in three hours tonight, which is achievable. Achievable. But, um... Yeah. So, yes, beautiful blooms. Aya, We're back! enjoyed the film which was a shocker because I found the first one quite boring we went to Lidl on the way home and I picked up this caramel because we had this in muffins a couple of weeks ago um, and it was very good and you don't see it in all the shops so I bought it to have eventually she doesn't need to eat it until April 2025 um, and I also got some sweet chilli sauce some broccoli and noodles because we were gonna have a sort of stir-fry type thing tonight but then when we were on the way home I was like Actually, it's gone eight o'clock. So I'd also bought some reduced. And look how you got loads of this. This was in Lidl reduced vegan sushi platter. Normally three ninety nine, down to two seventy nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen pieces of sushi. And these are my favourite. These I think they're called uh, something kari. No, inari nigiri. That's like tofu. But it's lovely. Um, and then I also got these. So that's for dinner. Feels all right. 
like I said, I enjoyed it much, much more than I enjoyed the first, um, the first one, but not the ones with um, Melissa McCarthy in and all of that lot. The, the, the first Paul Rudd one, which I found a bit boring, if I'm being honest. But this one I was quite entertained. James Acaster was in it. It was just kept blowing my mind that James Acaster was there the whole time. I was like, he's actually got quite a big part in this. And they've really sort of zhuzhed him up a bit. Mm. <laughs> and um, yeah, I thought it was all right. And then I saw the trailer. The trailers we saw, I wasn't that interested in. Borderlands? Borderlands? Badlands? Borderlands, Borderlands no interest in. It just looks like a sort of knockoff of um, Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy. David said it's based on a film. Um, and, uh, oh, what was the name of that? Um, Ryan Gosling one. No, the, yeah, the Ryan Gosling one, Fall Guy, which I'd be yeah. quite interested in watching. And then... Oh, a Mad Max one that I've no interest in watching. And then there was a um, anime one. What was that called? But that looked quite oh, good. It, like Spy Family? Spy Family? I think Winter was, something? Yeah, I get the vibe that it's part of a series. So we probably wouldn't even want to watch it because I felt like the end of it, it looked like they revealed a character that... If it was a, a franchise that I knew, I'd probably be like, <gasps> Oh my God! Which is what you love me doing. Oh, I need to chuck that because that's out. But yeah, so I'm going to go and eat my sushi now. Should have bought some more marmite when I was out. That is absolutely dead. Not not a drop left in there. And um, yeah, I need to do quite a bit of reading. So if I want to keep on top, I'm, I'm beginning, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to read for 24 hours. But yeah, so I've got to read for two hours 45 today and it's quarter past eight. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm going to, but I'm going to go and eat this now and do a bit of reading. Maybe David will play or something while I'm reading. I also plan to have a book finished today as well, so maybe if I just cracked on I could finish Brotherless Night. We'll see. Hello, I'm in my, not only am I in my lovely comfy pyjamas, I'm in my lovely, um, let's move that so you don't have to, to look at that. Um, I am also in this, which is a sort of... Uh, uh, Udi, but not an Udi. It's a Sainsbury's one, but it's very, very warm and cosy. I'm in bed. It's just gone 10. The stats are, um, I have read for four hours and 56 minutes so far today, and I've still got two hours of the day left. So I'm going to sit in bed while David, what are you going to do, David? I don't know. Or Potter. Play? Not Witcher, though, because he doesn't play at night time because he gets a bit... Well, I mean, I think my, my, my quest at the minute isn't quite scary, so I might be okay to carry on with it. Is it a daytime one? Well, I mean, it can always be daytime because I can meditate. To... He makes it so that he meditates all the time. So it's always daytime. So it's always daytime because he gets a bit frightened. I mean, how cute is he? Do you really think? He's just so cute, isn't he? Um, so yeah, while David's entertaining himself in there, I mean, I have spent a lot of time with you today, so I don't feel too bad about being in bed at 10 o'clock reading. <laughs> you don't have to... You don't have to... Um... I've been with you all day and we went to the cinema. Yeah. So it's all okay. Hello, Debbie! So, yeah. So I've got really, really sickly. And the plan is, is that I was going to stay up past 12 and sort of chip into tomorrow's day anyway. So I'm going to sit in and finish the last 60 pages of Brotherless Night. I've also been listening to the audiobook of The Maiden by Kate Foster. I think we've done about two hours of that. Quite enjoying it. Reminded me a little bit, and I think it's just because of, like... The, the way the narrative is told. It's reminded me a little bit of um, The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. So, in this book, as is the same as Maggie O'Farrell, it opens with... You all right, Bebe? I'm, I'm going to shut the door okay. so I can play. Play and yeah. concentrate. Um, in this book, as, as it is in The Marriage Portrait, it opens with, like, something happening, like a big event. So we've just found out that our main character has been sentenced to death um, for a crime. And now we're going back to hearing about her story on the lit run up to that. But we keep sort of flashing back to what's happened at that time. And going back to sort of hearing her beginnings, we're finding out that the reason that she committed the crime or the reason that she, she got to know the people that are involved in the crime, the, the person she murdered, um, is because she used to work as a uh, sex worker they refer to her as a whore in the book and she refers to herself as a whore um, and she's just been recruited recruited to go and work at a castle for someone for one month which literally never happens a little bit like pretty woman i guess <laughs> so um but yeah i've been quite enjoying it like i said the accents are lovely and everything so uh, when i've not been 
physically reading when I've been like getting ready for bed and picking out something to wear tomorrow and have a little pot around I've been listening to that as well so I think tomorrow I'll up it to 1.2 I've got quite a lot of prep in the morning to do we've got friends coming around at 12 so I'm gonna get up a bit earlier anyway maybe have half hour reading on the sofa hello Duffy hello you coming off her that tripod no she's just pouring at the tripod come over here and say hello yeah you're moving the tripod aren't you do you want to come and say hello? Do you? Come here, my gorgeous little baby. Look. Aren't you just... She's just such a special girl. She's such a lovely baby. You're a very gentle girl, aren't you? Gentle, but also a bit bitey. Oh, look. She's just dolloped on my lap. She really does like affection. Which is very nice, isn't it? Isn't it, my precious baby? <laughs> she's, I think she's losing her winter coat at the moment because when I'm stroking her, she's literally handfuls of hair, as you can see, are just coming away. I need to give you a good brush, don't I? Don't I, little one? Um, so yeah, so that's the plan for the next few hours. And then I think I was saying that I've got a bit of prep to do in the morning, so I'll listen to more audiobook in the morning wake up a bit earlier and then i've got some muffins to make i'm making two things i'll go over this in the morning as well but I'm making two things from the green roasting tin and the beauty of making things from the green roasting tin is it's literally like chop 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 put everything in the tray and then when the people arrive or when you're almost ready for dinner you just stick things in the oven so I highly recommend the green roasting tin for that as well but yeah let's do a little bit more reading i need to take my tablets for the night Metformin and an iron tablet if you're interested and um, yeah oh better set the alarm I've been very good with keeping on top of well, do please don't let this be famous last words but I've been very good with keeping on top of um, my thingy so uh, the timer so four hours 56 I've done so far off we go quick get that written down quick so I can start reading 2209 hours put that there that means definitely be playing with a pen right here we go the last 60 pages of this now well in a very pleasing culmination of events i've just hit six hours reading for today it's just gone quarter past 11 and i've just finished brotherless night by vv ganeshanathan this was fantastic so one thing i guess i can say about the women's prize is that sometimes there'll be a book on there which will educate you on something that you literally had no idea about. And I feel so disappointed with myself that I had no idea about this. Not only because it's a massive piece of sort of world history that I should know about, but also that I work with two Sri Lankan people. So this talks about the period of Sri Lanka in the 80s, um, particularly in Jaffna, where Shasi, our narrator, lives. Um, where there is much turmoil and a civil war um, in Jaffna um, between the Tamil people and the Tigers. Um, and it documents that in all of its horror and all of the awful things that happened to the people that, that, there, that were there and the actions that people who were there took and yeah it talks about knowledge and power and what you can do for the people that you live with and the people that are family and the, pe uh, the people that your family and the people that aren't your family but have become your family Shasi, our narrator wishes to become a doctor um she has four brothers at the stop at the top of this novel the the title brotherless night gives away some of what happens there but the processes she goes through and there's a, a absolutely heartbreaking bit at the end um where she discusses um one of her friends but yeah i've sort of left I've, I've finished it and i feel a bit breathless about it because i enjoyed it throughout but this last sort of 45 minutes of just sat here and reading the last 100 pages yeah fantastic piece of work Please let this be on the short list. Please, please, please. So yeah, so um, I'm going to uh, review this on Instagram now. Like I said, 
I've just hit six hours, which is great because that means I've hit my target for today. I'm going to start another book in a minute and I wanted to read just the other side of 12 just so I've made a little chip into tomorrow. But yeah, if I'm, a, if I'm about to carry on reading as well, that's pretty good. But yeah, I just feel like I need a bit of time for that just to sit, but brilliant. If you're only going to read one book from the long list, at the moment, I'm four books in, I would say let it be this one. But yeah, amazing. Amazing. David's cold. I was cold. That's why I put this fleecy blankie on. It. I mean, it's eighteen point two. It's not. It's not that cold. Do you want to put this on? This Udi. It will warm you up. No popping off while the, the camera's on. Would you say? Pop say sorry to the viewers. Hello. <laughs> sorry about my pop offs. Sorry about my pop offs. Um. So yeah, I finished that book and I'm going to move on to the next one. The next one, which is due back next, is Eight Lives of a Century Year Old Trickster by Maureen A. Lee. This isn't that long, actually. Well, it's, it's 287 pages long. So there's a chance I could get this done this weekend as well. I'm quite into the front cover of this. It's got an eight and then they've got an eye and some flowers. And then within that eight, they've got seven... I guess seven of the lives. So slave, escape artist, murderer, terrorist, spy, lover, and mother. And then each of the chapters is like a different life. So yeah, and it starts with a prologue. So it's about 20 to 12 now. I'm gonna read for a little bit. Like I said, I would like to read to a little bit the other side of um, 12 and just see how I get on I'm still thinking about Brotherless Night but we go straight on to the next one the first line of this is I, what I've been doing with these as well is I've been because I've, I've, I explored the blurbs and stuff when this long list first got announced but I haven't really been reading the blurbs and I've been doing this a little bit more this year so I've been picking up a library book reading a couple of chapters and then looking at the blurb and being like oh <laughs> to see what's going on anyway the prologue is the idea came to me whilst i was going through my divorce oh i need to put my timer on keep always forgetting about that guys go good morning got some volume in the old hair haven't i <laughs> after a night's sleep i hope you're all doing very well oh Oh, the night sleep. It's half past seven ish. And um, yeah, just awake. David's still asleep. We've got guests arriving at 12. Before then, I've got to clean the bathroom. David's going to sort that out in here and make this look presentable. What are you going to do, Daphne? Are you going to say, oh, don't go on the, don't go on the windowsill, Daphne? There's flowers up there. Oh no, she's interested in the birds, she can go out there for the time being. But I thought I'd come in, because I've also got a lot of cooking and prepping to do, and I'll show you that in a minute, but I thought I'd just have a little session with my book. I actually ended up reading for six hours and 29 minutes yesterday, so I was half hour above schedule. So, like I said, today's gonna be a bit of a tougher day to fit in though, that reading, because we've got guests around from 12. So, She's not eating it, she's just really interested in what's going on outside. What are you doing? Oh! <laughs> oh! Look at all this fluff. Like I said, I think she's losing her winter coat. It's all just coming off, isn't it, Gabby? It's all just coming off. Daddy have to do hoovering. Do you want to come and sit on here? She's just not much for... She's very of, of her own terms, this girl, aren't you? But I think you might like it on here. You might like lap stuff. 
occasionally she'll sit on your lap and you feel like you're the best cat mommy in town. No, she's gone, but fluff. Um, so yeah, six hours 29 yesterday, which I'm really pleased with. So another six hours to do today, but if I'm being realistic, I don't think it's gonna happen. We've got guests from 12. And then my friend Emma's going to stay sort of into the evening because we're going to watch a film. So we'll see. We'll do our best. But then we've got the same sort of thing tomorrow, but from two. But then Monday is empty. And it's raining. And David and I did have plans to just sort of stay in. So that could be the catch up day. So it could still happen. I'm on target at least. But let's sit and read a little bit more of... Okay, so I started Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster. I mean, wasn't far into it, 26 pages. Good premise so far. It's sort of talking about um, somebody who's been employed to um, write obituaries for people in old people's homes. With the people who are going to die. And she's come across somebody... Um, whose name I've forgotten already, Mrs. Mook, Mook, um, who said, and, she, and the person who writes the obituary says she asked for three words, but she's spoken to Mrs. Mook, and Mrs. Mook's like, I'll give you eight words. And she gives her seven, and she said, well, that's only seven. And she says, ah, oh, you were listening. And then the, the eight or seven words that she's given her, she then works through. And the first one she's picked is murderer, which is the fifth life. In 1961. So yeah, I'm going to keep going with that then. Let's go. So we begin. David's going to clean the, well, tidy up and clean the lounge, aren't you, Bebe? I've got a bit of sleep in my eye. Um, and I'm going to make the muffins and start on the dinners. The dinners, the two things for dinner. But I'll show you what I'm going to make. Now I've got rid of that bit of sleep and I will wash my hands before I cook, do not fear. So the muffins I'm making are, so on a Friday, during my Friday reading vlogs, I'm slowly working my way through cooking everything in the sweet roasting tin. One tin, cakes, cookies and bakes. God, I forgot there was cookies in here. Uh, this week we're going to be making raspberry, lemon and hazelnut crumble uh, muffins, which I'm quite excited about because I love hazelnut. I quite like lemon too. So that's what's happening. And then for dinner, we're having, well, lunch, watercress and parsnip panzanella with gorgonzola honey and radishes because all of those things are delicious. Oh, and then I haven't put, oh, and this. Carrot and telegio tart tatan. And David is heading out to, and I'll probably prepare that first, just yes, I will. David is heading out to get two nice rolls to go in the, Oh yeah, some chip bags around. Yeah, and a nice bit of bread to go on the on the thing. So yeah, it's all coming together. But he's gonna do the lounge first. But now I'm about to brush my brush my hands, wash my hands. And then we'll um make the cover the cakes, the muffins. If you enjoy watching a bit of cooking, you should go and check out the old Friday reading vlogs guys, because there's always a bit of cooking in there. Just found that. So let's start by getting everything out. So 250 grams of self-raising flour. That's in there. Baking powder, that's in there. Soft brown sugar, that's in there. One lemon zest only. Oh, Debbie! Do the crops go back this weekend? Tonight. Oh my God. Yeah, forward they go. Forward. Spring forward. Olive oil. Natural yog. Oh, I better have my yak hole as well. Natural yog and natural yak. Uh, 30 ml of lemon juice. So I've got another. Let's see how much juice I get out of that lemon, but I've got another one here. These are very juicy lemons. One medium free range egg, lightly beaten. Two hundred grams of fresh or frozen and defrosted raspberries. So, yeah. I 
do have fresh raspberries. berries. Is there 200 grams in there? Better than that, there's 250 grams. Put them in juice yesterday. And then unsalted butter, which is out. Plain flour. Hazelnuts. And sea salt flakes. Lovely, lovely. Right, okay. Well, let's get the old audio book on. And let's get going. I've been, I've been very impressed with the, the, the turnout of all of these muffins. I've been being really good. And actually, they look like this. Oh, no. Nice. Haven't the muffins been brilliant? Muffins been delicious. So, so far out of this book, because I'm only working my, I'm working my way through chronologically. On the muffin side of life, I've only made two lots of muffins, but I've made one set twice because I love them so much. So I've made blackberry cream cheese muffins, which I made originally with blackberries, and then the next time I made them, I couldn't get any blackberries, so I made them with blueberries and they were lovely. And then intense chocolate salted caramel muffins, which is why I bought the caramel. But yeah, I've never been a great baker, but this book is really... I feel like I'm doing very, very well with it. And like... Apart from a few things which I haven't liked the taste, everything's turned out great. Fingers crossed that this, which is for actual people, turns out great as well. Right, okay, preheat the oven to 180 degrees. And let's Rooms cleaned, <clears throat> two dishes prepared, muffins made. I'm gonna try the muffin. Raspberry, lemon, and hazelnut crumble. Very nice again. David's just gone out to get some. Um, mm, David's gone out to get some bread, broccoli. I think maybe a bottle of non-alcoholic fizz. What I will say about these muffins is not only are they extremely light, none of them are super sweet, which I quite like. Look at that. Raspberry distribution. Even the salty caramel chocolate one, very well balanced. But I mean, what should I expect from, I've literally got a Rukmini Ia sponsored day today. Muffins are made by her. Well, made by me, recipe by her. And the two lunches we're going to be having are also made by her. Oh, I forgot, I was supposed to be doing a chopped salad as well. I can do that later. I think I'm going to read a little bit more. Oh, the reading. So far, I've read for nine hours, 17 minutes, which I'm really pleased about. So, I'm well on schedule. I have read for half of the time, I, over half the time I wanted to read today. It's just gone 11. They're expected at 12. I'm going to sit and read my actual book now. I'm doing that because it's there. Um, God, this is lovely. Before they get here, 
So I might get up to 10 hours. Yummy. Um, I might get up to 10 hours. And that means I've just got to do two hours tonight. However, Emma's probably going to be staying a little bit later tonight because we're going to watch A Quiet Place. Scary. But, um, yeah, we'll just do as much as we can. Like the whole thing. It was lovely. But let's read more of my actual book. My audio book, I'm really getting on with. When I saw that it had been long listed, the maiden we're talking about now, when I saw it had been long listed, I thought, oh. But actually, I'm quite into it. It appeared on someone's, I can't remember whose, best books of the year last year because I already had it out. And I'd literally taken it back to the library about two days before the Women's Prize Longlist got announced. So, um, but I'm glad that happened, to be honest, because I'm really enjoying listening to the audiobook. So, yeah. But let us carry on with Eight Lives of a Century Year Old Trickster. Love the word trickster. Trickster. Right. <laughs> what a day! We had a nice day, didn't we, David? We did have a nice day. Went for a walk along the beach. Had... Lunch was nice. Did you like lunch, by the way? Yeah, lunch was delicious, bub. Yeah, I mean, I, that carrot tart is... Good. Quite a lot of blue cheese in lunch today, but wow. enjoyable nevertheless. Haven't done any more reading. Oh, and we've just sat and watched um, A Quiet Place 1, which I quite enjoyed, actually. David, how did you feel about it? How many stars would you give it? I gave it a three star. Oh, OK. I like, I, don't get me wrong, like, I didn't love it. Three out of ten? No, 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 oh. it's a six out of ten. Um, uh, but I mean, I was engrossed. I was very engrossed. Was when tense. I said, oh, we've only got 35 minutes left, I was like, what? Yeah, but it's just not my cup of tea, that type of thing. I would watch the second one. I enjoyed it. It's been on my list of th films that I've wanted to watch for a really long time, so. Watched. 27 films I've watched this year, so far. Same. 26 new to me films. So feeling very, very pleased with myself. Yours can't be 26 new to me, because you watched better. No, Cars. sorry, so, 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 tw so I, sorry, I've watched more movies than you, oh, but okay. 27 are new, new to me. You. I think so I've watched, watched like 31 or 32. Yeah, very well, very well done for all of us. But anyway, Emma's just left. Clock's going forward tonight. Mm. Um, I assume my phone will sort that out, that sort of carry on it out itself, will it? Welcome to 2024. That sort of thing. What about my other clocks? So I have to wind those forward. <laughs> um, but I've still, so I haven't read any more today. So I've read all together for 10 hours and 11 minutes. That's amazing over two days. So I've got one hour, 49 minutes left to read by the end of today. And it's quarter to 10. So I could do that. And I didn't think I was going to get it done today. But what I would like to do, because my plan was to sort of finish a book every day, I'm not going to finish, um, I'm not going to be able to finish The Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster tonight. But I will carry on reading that. But I think what I will do is I'm going to read Foster by Claire Keegan, which is 88 pages long. And I've been really wanting to read it for ages. So what are you going to do, David? Sorry, what are you doing? You're I'm going to reading. read this book. Um, I might watch another film. Oh, really? What film? Might watch. Um, what should we call it? Roadhouse. Okay. Unless, unless you would like to watch it, now I can try and find something else. Um, but I don't think I don't know if you'd like it or not. No, I don't. Well, I'm not it's that. It's a lot of you... violence. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, he's a bouncer, and it's all about fighting. Oh, I thought it was like Dirty Dance or something no 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 oh no i definitely don't want to watch yeah. that then i look so small in the middle of the screen um so yes it's been a very nice night and uh, a very nice day and night and i do feel a bit tired though yeah i feel tired but just like uh, i've just had a, a lovely day yeah. tired i'm gonna read well maybe i'll go into the other room and read if you want to if you want to watch telly yeah, i'll put my headphones on put my telly are you scared? I'm not scared at all. Um, yeah. Well done me. I feel really tired, but I've got reading to do, so must get on. I'm so tired I can't even be bothered <laughs> to move this camera to a better angle. 
Oh, bye, Duffy. She just laid on the bed with me for ages, which is very cute. I'm so tired. I did read Foster, um, but I'm not going to review it until the morning. But it's five to eleven. I bet for eleven hours and eight minutes in total. So I am 52 minutes behind schedule when I start tomorrow, but that's fine. I actually thought I'd be much more than that, so I'm sure I can chip into that tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a longer day as well. But again, I can prep stuff in the morning and listen to my audiobook and things like that. So, yeah, I'm going to go to bed now. I'll see you in the morning. Night, night. I could literally fall asleep now. Good morning. It's not my usual early morning. Well, it's five to, well, ten to nine. But the clocks went forward last night. So really it's ten to eight. And I will be doing that for at least two weeks. <laughs> saying, oh, it's this time. But it's really this time. So yeah, so I, I afforded myself, I did set my alarm for half seven, but I um, afforded myself an extra hour and a bit in bed just because I was so tired. And it's a big day today, so I've got a bit of catching up to do because we're, we did 11 hours and eight minutes all together and I wanted to be on 12 hours by the time I started today. So we're a little bit behind, but that's fine. We can catch up. Today's a bigger day in terms of, there'll be less reading done today, but I can definitely catch up to I mean realistically even if I did no reading today which isn't going to happen there's every chance I would be able to do 13 hours reading on Monday because there's no plans for Monday so yeah first things first because I went to bed instantly last night I've got to wrap up foster and put that on my Instagram so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to crack back on with eight lives of a century year old trickster and yeah just sit here for a bit I've got two salads to make. David's got some to make. I've got to wash my hair. Um, and we've got to be at my parents for two o'clock. So that's like five hours away. So there's plenty of time for all this. I'm going to be listening to my audiobook, The Maiden, whilst I'm doing the cooking and stuff like that. I'm going to up it to 1.5 at the moment. I mean, I might even have that done today. So at the moment, oh yeah, I've, it says I've got five hours, 50, 50 minutes left, but once I've upped it to 1.5, how long have I got left? Four hours, 40 minutes. So yeah, there's every chance I could have this done today. I've quite enjoyed this. And then I have to pick another audio book, which is good. Right, let's review Foster, and then let's do a little bit of reading. Yeah. And the other ones is the, they've, they've got chocolate orange in. Chocolate orange yeah. cookies! Can I try a bit of the batter? Yes, you can drop it to better. Not much so. Not much? Like, yes, it's quite a lot, but I'm sure that now, isn't it? Very yummy. They're good. very good at making cookies. As you can see over there. So, how's things? <laughs> Alright. Would you get down my Ministry of Food cookbook? Because I've got to make two chopped salads out of that. Yes. And I'm also making... Would you want to wait until I'm done completely in here? I'll have so a, I'm gonna have a muffin have from a muffin, yesterday's I'll make you a cup of tea. as my breakfast. Do you want one? No, no, no. I've, I've had a bit of batter. And quite a lot of batter, I imagine. Okay, I'll go and read for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go to my mum's to make one of the salads because it's a chopped salad, and this is it's similar to what I made yesterday. And the colour—it's still delicious, yeah, but the colour yeah. it turns, doesn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. Right. David's gonna make me a cup of tea. I'm gonna eat this and read a bit more. I've got less than 100 pages now left of the eight lives of a century year old chick trickster. I haven't trickster. loved it. Trickster. I haven't loved it. I think that's partly to do with, I'm finding it a bit difficult to follow. Um, but yeah, and also maybe because I loved Brotherless Night so much, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't loved this. And I've only got 100 pages left, otherwise maybe I would have given up if I'm being honest. But anyway, do you want me to go now, David? No, better be ready. I'm going to go to go and get like this. It's my time in the kitchen. So I'm actually making three salads. Two are from Jamie's Ministry of Food, which is a really old cookbook. 
which if you're starting off getting into cooking, I would really advise. I've got some great soups, lentil and spinach, for example. I love that one. And pea and mint and the tomato is really nice as well. There's also, when I was for my meat eating days, the sweet potato and chorizo, that used to be something I'd make all the time because it just tasted so nice. Um, but yeah, they're very good. The, I have, the dust jacket went long ago because I've used it so much, but yeah, you can see. So I'm making this chopped salad and then also a Mediterranean chopped salad. Um, but the one I am making, my sister sent me a recipe and this is literally going from, so when, hold on, hold on. So, for mine and David's um, advent calendars, the past few years, we've got ourselves some nice, delicious foodie bits from a local farm shop. And something David got me last week, uh, last year, was this rich poppy seed dressing, which is apparently delicious on peaches. So I thought I would make- Oh, you're using the dressing? Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, so I thought I would um, make the peach salad from my sister's, it's called Stacey's Roasted Peaches with bur burrata and raspberries. Oh, there's the raspberries. Oh, the raspberries are in the dressing. So I'm not making the dressing because we're using this dressing. Um, so yeah. So what should I do? Because I don't want these two chopped salads to go discoloured. Do you serve this hot? <laughs> no. Oh, eat immediately. All of these salads. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, my handsome boy. Hi. All of these salads need doing to eat immediately. That's annoying, isn't it? What do I do? Shall I make the Mediterranean one at least? Okay, yeah. Let me read my mum. Need to be pre-cooked. Yeah, but to eat. I'm going to ring my mother. Alexa, stop. Your time has just gone off. She will say to me, "Make it there." I can tell you. This is eating into my valuable reading time. I just think it's best to make it there. Yeah, because I just don't think it's going to travel very well. And no. also it's got like, the chopped salad I already know doesn't travel well because it's got yeah. avocado in it. No bloody answer. Right, try my father. Oh, hello. Why are you unhappy? Why are you unhappy? Um, what are you watching? Oh, a bit of, um, what's that called? Is my mother there? She's having a shower. Oh, she ain't gonna be happy with me. All three of my salads really need preparing just before we eat them. So I was thinking of coming there and doing it. What, now? Not now, but like in like nearer the time. So in like an hour or two. Ah. Okay. Oh, well. Oh, they're chopped salads, Dad, and they're just not going to make the journey, I don't think. Alright. Well, it's not the end of the world, is it? Well, not for me or you, but maybe for others. Oh, well. Alright then. Well, I'll have a shower myself then. Yeah. And, um, I'll come round a bit later on then. Yeah. What are you doing? Roast potatoes? Yeah. Well, you crack on with that then and watch whatever Ben Shepherd's showing you in the background. It's decided, we'll make it all there. So, I think I'll go and have a shower now and wash my hair, and then I'll get everything ready and then we'll go. Yeah. I'm about to take a swig out of that thing, but what I meant to do is take a swig of my tea. Back from Easter at my parents. It was lovely, David's just talking about all the leftovers he's taken back. Um, can you hear me? We've got noodles, <laughs> we've got coleslaw. We had a lovely day and it's now 20 to 10. So I've read for 11 hours and five minutes altogether. So I've got nine hours, that's not true. I've read for 14 hours and five minutes. So I've got nine hours and 55 minutes to read. By close of play tomorrow, absolutely doable I would say. I mean, I'm not gonna, oh, I'm not gonna get up to six hours left tomorrow, but 
tomorrow we've literally got no plans. I mean, the plans are read and oh, look at that. Read and do what we what we will. So yeah, I'm going to read a lot now. I, I mean, what I will wish, what I do wish, because I'm quite looking forward to just now being in bed and reading. I sort of tempted to feel tempted to have a bath, but it might be a bit late. Is it too late to have a bath, David? Pardon? Is it too late to have a bath? Um, I, I'm all right, but if you want to get in, I would say get in right now, Bert. I think it might be too late for a bath. But, but if not, I'm going to go and poo in there. Not in the bath, in the toilet. Not, in the... No. Um, what I do wish is that I was coming home to read more of an exciting book. Because, yeah, I sort of feel like I've, I've burnt my bridges with this now. I've sort of had enough of it. But we carry on. I've got so far, I've got less than 100 pages to go. In fact, I can probably tell you how many pages I've got to go. Oh, I've got 67 pages left. I can do that, can't I? I can bloody do it. And I will. So, I'm going to get ready for bed whilst listening to the audiobook. And then I'll read that in bed. Gosh, she's taking off all her jewels. I've got a little bit of social media updating to do because I've got to put on my um, my video for the month of all my outfits, which I've been quite looking forward to doing. But yeah, I'll get ready, we'll listen to a little bit of the audiobook, and then get in bed, cup of tea. Yeah, no bath, no bath. Might have daytime bath tomorrow. Oh, daytime baths tomorrow, David, instead. Yeah. Decided. And yeah, right, okay. Let's pop the old audiobook on now then. That's the spinner you can hear going. I've got three hours 16 left of my audiobook, so that'll be done tomorrow. Go. And Christophe, quite enjoyed it. Silencing women and and Hello. I've been reading in bed for an hour. And I've finished Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster. Nah, just went for me. And just to reiterate what I've written in my um, Instagram uh, wrap up, which you may well have already seen. I just think maybe espionage novels aren't for me. And that features quite heavily in this book. I struggle already to follow a novel about people, well, about a time in history that I'm not overly familiar with. Um, and then to add on top of that different names for different people in different situations just yeah it just didn't I, I just found it quite difficult to follow and strangely the book ending of it so it starts and ends with this woman who writes um sort of obituaries for people in old people's homes um i found very readable and i was like oh okay i'm really going to enjoy this and then the middle bit i was like struggling with and then the end bit i was like oh well if it had all been like this maybe i would have liked it a bit more but yeah, I guess that's because that sort of situation was more familiar to me, maybe. And I also felt the sort of chronology of it didn't work for me either. Sort of flipping all over the place, which again made it hard for me to follow. So I think mainly the thing is, is that I, it, I found it difficult to follow. So there we go. And she's done 15 hours and 23 minutes of reading. I'm very pleased with myself. Um, and it's quarter to midnight, which really is quarter to 11. <laughs> I keep saying that. Um, and I'm actually one book ahead of my reading schedule for the Women's Prize. And I've got under three hours, I think. Let me get a double check. Two hours, 51 minutes of The Maiden Left, which I will probably finish tomorrow. Well, I would definitely finish that tomorrow. So I'm feeling very, very pleased with myself. So off the back of feeling pleased with myself and that I had planned on starting The Wren, The Wren, which is my next book that I've got out from the library that is due back next. It's due back on the 12th of April. So I've got a little bit of time for it. But um, that's the next book on the Women's Prize for Long List that I wanted to read. But I've also got, has anyone seen Charlotte Salter, which I'm quite keen to read. This is also due back on the 11th of April, in fact. So but look at the, the, the font in this is mahesive. So it's a, it's a big old book. It's five, whoa, it's 530 pages. But I feel like it's a real page turner, isn't it? And I feel like maybe after that, I could treat myself to a book because when I came back from my mum's like I said in the video I was like I really wish I was getting like deep into a book that I was really into so maybe I'll read this because it's a thriller and I've previously got on with Nikki French's work so I think that's where I'm going to go next so I'm going to read for a little bit longer here I'll read just past 12 I reckon 
and then I'll um yeah and then I think I'll call it a night and try and get everything else done so yeah 15 hours oh time left is 8 hours 37 minutes so I'm gonna have another I mean maybe I could read for 37 minutes and then I'll only have 8 hours going in tomorrow that'll be nice I'll aim for that I will aim for that I'm just gonna go and say hello to David because I finished this book and I'm not timing myself at the moment Ooh, itchy leg um and then I think I'll um I'll crack on with that. Quite looking forward to it, actually. I haven't read a Nicky French book in a while. Good morning. Good morning, David. Morning. You just see David's arm there. This is my arm. It's Easter Monday. I'm tired, David. Are you? Really tired. Well, we've had, like, three really busy days. Really busy. We actually have. Oh, and we... three... oh I've had lots of late nights. Yeah, David has had lots of late nights. And we kicked off with the choir show on Thursday, so... Oh, God, yeah, and that. Mm. It's been... like rehearsing on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, it has been a busy old few days. But Easter Monday is naught but rest and recuperation. So, reading... Listen to me audiobook. I've got I'm gonna do some cross stitch as well because it's my cousin Laura's birthday this week and I've done her well, I've started her a cross stitch, so I need to finish that. Cause that's quite a big piece. So I'll listen do that and listen to some audiobook as well. So yeah, I've got Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, seven hours and 58 minutes left. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. And it's quarter past nine. But really, it's quarter past eight. No, it's quarter past nine. It's quarter past nine. So, that's well achievable. I've got my audiobook to listen to as well, and then I'll start a new one. I mean, I don't know what the deal is, but I might quickly get through this and start a new book. Who knows? I don't know. I read 40 pages of this last night. Oh, forgive me, 44 pages of this last night. And that's what I'm going to do now while my husband goes to make me a cup of tea. While my husband goes to make me a cup of tea. Husband? You can't see that finger. Oh. <laughs> Let me put it up so you can. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. Will you make me a cup of tea? Yeah, we'll do it in a minute. He's a good husband, isn't he? I've also got a few little chore chores to do today. But yeah, it's just generally going to be relaxing. But anyway, let's get cracking on with the reading. Bye. Oh, God, I'm so tired. I am tired. A muffin and a cookie later. <clears throat> And also, a cookie. I had a cookie and also an hour and 17 minutes later and I've listened to another hour of my audiobook. It's on sped up. It's on 1.7. Oh, he's <laughs> <laughs> And I've read 144 pages of this book. So I do think I will have this book read today. It reads very fast. Plus the font is very big. Um, I'm going to get in the bath actually. So if you could make me a cup of tea when I get in the bath. So it is now time for the daytime bath. As previously mentioned, will you be getting in after me, my my love and my lady? Oh, daytime bath. The Monday. Yeah, Easter Monday. They are nice Monday. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Easter I will. Monday. Um, so yeah, so the, the the plan is to. I was going to say by lunchtime, but I don't think I was thinking. Oh, by lunchtime, maybe I'll have my book read. I've got an hour and fifty-seven minutes left of the book, so I won't have it done by lunchtime. Um, but yeah, I can well see me getting both of these done today. At the moment, I've still got six hours and 40 minutes of reading left, so that does mean I'm slightly behind. That's why it's written in red, because I should be on track for six hours a day, so. But completely doable. Even if I didn't read any more until 12, and then I just read solidly, I'd still be done at 6.40. So, it's going well. Um, yeah. David, are you going to go to the shops? Yes, I will do, bud. Do you want to check that they're open? Because it's bank holiday, isn't it? They'll be open. I think they're like Sunday hours on bank holiday. Cool. I might get you a few more bits so I can make those muffins. Then you can take the muffins with you tomorrow. What, what muffins? Uh, peanut butter and, and raspberry jam. Quite risky because I don't know if I'm going to like them. Why? It's banana. <laughs> banana. <laughs> banana. 
It's only banana, they're vegan muffins and the banana is acting as a sort of egg replacement. You'll be fine. You like banana loaf? Not really. <laughs> if it's covered in stuff, like chocolate, then yeah. Oh well. Well the biscuit was nice, it wasn't an orange one, it was a, another one. Right. Cool. Okay then, well, what I will say about this book, so it's about a woman who's gone missing. This bit is in the 90s. I haven't read the blurb because like I said, I'm doing this thing now where I get a little bit in and then I read the blurb. Um, there's a woman gone missing. She doesn't turn up to her husband's 50th birthday party and she's gone missing. Nobody really seems that bothered. The, the family themselves all seem like arseholes. And then the next day, and this is on the run up to Christmas, and then on Christmas day, the family are invited to a friend's house so that they're not on their own. And then when they get there, the father of that family is found dead in the river. So there's been two, well, one missing, one death, and now they're looking into it. But what I believe is that there's also a podcast going on in sort of modern day, which is now looking at this, but we haven't got that far yet. But yeah, no one is likable. Also, they all refer to her as Charlie, even their kids. When they're like asking questions, they're like, has anyone seen Charlie? Rather than has anyone seen my mum? Which I find a bit bizarre. Yeah, it's a big chunky one. But we continue. That's the other thing about reading. That's why I've got my yoga block here. <laughs> I use it as a balancing tool rather than for any yoga. Um, but when I go in the bath, that'll be heavy as well. Right. My battery's flashing, so it might be now time to go and get myself ready for my bath and have a nice daytime bath. And then wear clothes today that aren't green. It's the 1st of April today, pinch punch first day of the month. And um, I'm not wearing green anymore. So I will celebrate by wearing green, imagine. No, I'm not gonna wear green. I'll wear something else. I don't know what yet. Dressed, not in green. Although this does have a bit of green in. I wonder if maybe in my March days where I was thinking, how am I gonna re wear green every day? I could have considered this, but no. I love it by the way. I got it for Christmas off of David's mum. It's from Joni, the Dorno Porter range. <clears throat> I just think it's really psychedelic. And I've got a shirt um, that's got mushrooms on as well. Not quite this print, but yeah. Just love sort of mushroom stuff. I think it's really fun. And it looks quite 70s, doesn't it? Anyway, I have now read for 18 hours and four minutes. Um, I've got five hours and 56 minutes to read by the end of the day. It is not quite half past 11, so I'm doing very well. Um, and I'm going to crack on while David's in the bath with a little bit more. Has anyone seen Charlotte Salter? David's going to go to the shops. Shall I go with him? No, I won't go with him. But I am going to ask him if we'll go for a little walk around the block. Um, just to get outside for a bit, because it's not, it's, it's cloudy, but it's not wainy. Um, so yeah, so I will continue with all of that. I'm feeling very much on time, but continue, let's go. 11.26, 11.26. Quick, throw yourself across. <laughs> David's just gone out to do some errands to get a few bits for, for dinner. We're gonna have a stir fry tonight. So we've already got the noodles. But I've told him to get some tender stem and just a little stir fry mix or something. Um, and to get a few other bits, I haven't got any tea bags. He's going away tomorrow, so by the time you're watching this, he'll be back. But um, yeah, he's away for a night, so, and I won't have the car. So he needs to get me some tea bags. Um, so yeah, so I've just listened, I've got 45 minutes left of the maiden. Did I mention that I had the maiden out from the library as well? Obviously I won't need to read this, so I can take this back. Um, but yeah, I've got 45 minutes of this left I've quite enjoyed it I feel like I've read better historical fiction that hasn't made the long list for the women's prize but it's been fine and I was sort of like <clears throat> interested in how the ending worked out so yeah it's definitely because there's been one so I've enjoyed it more than I enjoyed like eight lives of a century or a trickster and western lane so I have enjoyed it more but I did not enjoy it as much as I enjoyed um night bloom and brotherless night those two are my top ones. What's the other one I've read? I thought that was my sixth one. One moment. Where does the other one feature? Oh, River East, River West. Yeah, I've enjoyed it more than I enjoyed River, River East, River West as well. So I've now got officially five hours left. I don't actually know what time it is because my phone's on charge in the other room. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 12.28 p.m. 12.28. So even if I just carried on right now, I would be done by 
5.30, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, I was listening to the audiobook and doing a little bit of my cross stitch. So this is going to be for my cousin. It's There's a lot of work to go. So these are, my, my cousin loves sort of geometric shapes and block colours and stuff like that. And I saw this pattern on Etsy. I'll link the pattern down below. Um, and I just thought, oh yeah, I can really see that. And the colour combos just really reminded me of her. Um, so it will eventually spell out wonderful. Um, and I'm hoping to get this in a frame as well. It is much bigger than I thought it would be. Um, I thought it was going to be like in a tiny little frame, but no, it is huge. Um, so yeah, but this is, I, I've sorted out all of the, I did a bit of pre-work and put all of the, um, all the threads that I would need based on the, the threads that I had um, into this grid, uh, into these. So I've literally just got to go through, but yeah, I'll get the what the W done today, maybe the O, because um, I'm going to start listening to another audio book once I finish The Maiden. And then maybe David and I watch a film tonight and maybe I'll do the N for one, de full. Um, but I'm seeing her this weekend, so I need to have it done in time for that. So yeah, probably started this a little bit late as well. But I think for now, I might have a little another read of Has Anyone Seen Charlotte Salter? We're now in 2022 with this guys, uh, with this book guys. We're at page 198, so yeah. I could see myself getting this done today. So I essentially could see myself finishing this. I'll definitely finish The Maiden. Starting a new audiobook and starting a new book. And I imagine after I've taken a break from the Women's Prize reading, I'll go back to another Women's Prize book. Either The Wren, The Wren or Enter Ghost. Or The Blue Beautiful World. Ooh. Well, let's get this done first. And then maybe I'll read the first paragraph or something from all of them and pick. Or maybe I'll get David to pick. They're all due back around the same time. I think they're all due back on the 12th, actually. So, yeah. Right. Anyway, I'll go and get my phone to start the timer again. And let's read another little bit of this. And then let's finish The Maiden. And hopefully I'll have that W finished. Oh, finished, but I actually haven't stopped the clock yet. There we go. Lap stop. How long has she done reading now? I've read for 19 hours and 46 minutes, David. Well done. Which means I've only got four four hours, well, wow, 14 minutes left to go. Good, oh my God, I'm... Smash it. Yeah. We can watch a film tonight, That's David. That's what I was going to say. Um, yeah, so there we go. I finished uh, The Maiden. So how, what, what, how many books is that this weekend then? This is my fourth. But chances are I probably will finish um, Nikki French because they, they read quite quickly, don't they? Well, We're in the... Pro people. Yeah, well, you've listened to audiobooks of Nicky French before. I'm yes. surprised. David's been very good with his reading this year. He's read four books, but none of them have been audiobooks. So you even have the chance, like, I know you were saying you want to get back to doing a walk in the morning or something. Yeah, I think once it, because it's still a bit too cold in the morning. You're still a bit too cold for him, but yeah, so he's doing very well. Anyway, I've, I've read The Maiden. Um, I'm very pleased with myself, and I've only got four hours and 14 minutes left to do. <laughs> Duffy. Um, I also finished the W in my cross stitch. So here it is, here looking, W. It looks very sort of like 80. 80s, um, 80s like logo doesn't it but I assure you with the rest of it so yeah um, David and I are now in the process of moving the lounge around so over here which is where the there he is down there that's my husband um, <coughs> where the sofa previously was we are now moving the table over there this is a little move around we like to do in the summer um, things up a bit. Yeah, it just it just mixes things up a bit. The only thing that we wonder if it's going to be an issue is at the moment that David got a new television for Christmas from his parents, and um, if you're sitting at an angle, the picture isn't great. The picture with you're sitting Bob in front of it is gorgeous, but yeah, we we find that we've had a few problems, haven't we, with with moving. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to see if that works out. But I quite like this setup. We have the sofa, as you can see, in front of the tele, uh, in front of the books, which means I film there for the for the summer. And then this chair, which David has been sitting in quite a lot, will now be in the window. So David's going to be spending a bit more time on the sofa. Yeah. You don't feel happy about that? No, I don't. I oh. Like my chair. Oh well, well maybe we can. If you don't like it, then we can maybe have a little yeah. a further, further mess up. But definitely very exciting because this hasn't happened. The other thing we need to make sure we do, David, is because we're good girls and boys now. Because we don't eat dinner on the new sofa and we eat at the table. We need to make sure that we're pulling the table out every day to eat dinner well, at the yeah. table because it's less easy to just sit at the table there, isn't it? It the, needs pulling yes, out a bit. So we need to make sure we're doing because that. Because it's not really an error to watch the. T we can't really watch the TV sitting at the table here well you can move it backwards and if we're sitting facing this way we can but it, it would be an effort all the time yeah so yeah so that's what we're going to do now we're going to move things around um and then i'll get back to 
to read him well once i've wrapped up the maiden and um yeah i might get you to help pick oh no 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 not yet not yet i haven't even finished the nikki french book yet but i'm gonna pick i'm gonna um pick my next audio book in a minute so should we do this yes i want to do it there i've already started doing it well here we go the summer setup is here David said he's not as in love with it as he normally is, but I'm always amazed whenever we move things around. Oh God, you're so far away. I'm always amazed by how much room there is. I can't believe how much room there is. So much room that you feel so far away. Well, I think I'll wrap up my book on, on Instagram. Oh, my phone's on charge. I'll wrap up my book on Instagram. The maiden done, that can go back to the library, hurrah. Um, and then I'll pick my next audio book and do a bit of Cross stitching, what you got there, David? A bit tarty flat. Tarty flat. Tarty flat was nice, wasn't it? Mm. Um, but my mum's given us the one that had bacon in it, <laughs> so I can't have any of it. Um, do I want anything? No, I'm all right. Do I? No, I'm not hungry. I had a muffin and a cookie. Um, yeah, so I think I'll wrap things up. What are you doing for the afternoon now, my, my um, love, my liege? Well, oh, we've four got hours and 14 minutes. We've got to do some work. Oh, yeah, when do you want to do that? Soon. Right, once I Hello? Listen. She's very excited because there's lots of new stuff going on. All right, eat that. That won't take long. I'll wrap this up. I've got to do a bit of voiceover work for David. Um, and then I'll listen to my audio book while I'm doing some cross stitch. I don't know what you want to do. You've got to do some cross stitch. Mm hmm. And yeah, I just will just crack on. Four hours, 14 minutes. And then maybe a film tonight, David. Yeah. Right, let's wrap this up. I enjoyed it. But I do think, I mean, I've, I've basically just said this. I think there's better, um, there's better historical fiction out there that previously hasn't been listed for the Women's Prize. Um, but it kept me, kept me gripped throughout. It's in the front cover properly. So many pineapples and uh, peacocks and stuff. Janice Hallett's blurbed it. Oh, what was that noise? I've done my work for my husband. Very well done. Thank you, David. I do read for, I was gonna say a living, but as an extreme hobby and lifestyle choice of mine. Um, and I'm now going to move on to the O in wonderful. Um, so that's gonna take a bit of time, so I'm going to start a new audiobook. Now, I've got two audiobooks that are on the Women's Prize for Nonfiction shortlist currently out. One I've got out on Libby and one I've got out on Borrow Box, yeah. So one I've got on Libby is Thunderclap by Laura Cumming and the one I've got out on Borrow Box is Doppelganger by Naomi Klein. I'm going to start, well, I might listen to a chapter of both just to see how I get on. And then, so there's, oh, there's only 32 seconds in that track. And just see how I'm getting on with both of them. Do you think that's a good idea, David? Yes. So I'm going to do that. What are you going to do, David? Uh, I don't know, really. Watch something? Do some cross-stitch and listen to my audiobook or not? Yeah, maybe. That means no. <laughs> but I'm going to do that, okay? So... See you again. Four hours, 12 minutes I've got left to do, so let's go for it. Oh, need to start my timer first. Start my timer. Can't find my bloody timer. Start. Well, I listened to the first chapter plus some of the second chapter of Doppelganger and did this much. <laughs> it's not much, is it, for 42 minutes solid work. Um, yeah, it's interesting. What I will say is that I'm not completely au fait with American politics or even sort of world politics um, so there is going to be some stuff that I'm not familiar with which I think mm. we'll see how it goes it's an interesting concept we're following Naomi so it's a non-fiction book Naomi Klein um, has somebody else who also goes by the name Naomi Klein you may well recognize the name Naomi Wolf which I did because they're the author of I think it's called The Beauty Myth, which I think I might have read. Um, but also has very differing sort of political views and some views about, like, 
I guess they're conspiracy theories and things like that. I, I don't know enough about that yet, but there's definitely one that she's just mentioned about visiting Belfast and finding that it felt so much more calmer. It was like the 1970s and this sort of thing um, because there was no 5G. And then anyway, turns out there was 5G when she went and also the 1970s had like during the troubles. So things were a little bit less calm at that time, let's say. Um, but yeah, I think it's an interesting concept and uh, yeah, we'll continue. But I think I'm go now going go to go to the loo and I'm going to listen to the first chapter of um, Thunderclap, which I have no idea what it's about. I had a sort of idea. Oh, Thunderclap. All oh, right, don't be a little sneeze. Um, I had a little idea about what, I, might, I mean, I must have read the blurb at some point. I think it might be about a musician. Um, but I'm going to listen to the first chapter of that while I go for it. Um, oh, the first chapter is an hour and four minutes long, which is pretty good in terms of getting this done. But anyway, I've only got three hours and 29 minutes left of, of needing to read. David, what are you doing, Bebe? Not talking to me, that's what he's doing. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go and go to the loo and then I will continue. I think I might start another letter actually, just so I've got an idea of how wide it's gonna be um, because I've just got to end that lilac thread for the, the bottom of the O, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. That was actually quite intense session of cross stitching, maybe because it was just one big block, but it, um, yeah, it was this big blue block. So this is, the W is done, this is the, half of the bottom half of the bottom half of the o and this is a bit of the n that the other half of the n is going to be yellow but yeah it's coming together but that was an hour and four minutes of <clears throat> thunderclap by laura cummins this is just to reiterate something i am sure i said earlier on in this vlog like sometimes these long lists and these short lists are so necessary because there's no way i would have picked up a book about the Dutch artist Carol Fabricius, which is how I think it's explained, uh, how, how I think the name is said. Um, but I've just listened to a chapter of that. Let's have a look. Double check that I'm getting the spelling right. Fabricius, yeah. Um, who's m the painting I'm most familiar with is The Goldfinch. And that's only because I've read a book, again, <laughs> because I've read a book called The Goldfinch. Um, which features that painting. But yeah, this sort of talks about the style and how Laura Cumming got into um, the sort of Dutch golden age of art um, and touches briefly on the fact that her mother and father are um, artists as well. Um, and yeah, just a sort of appreciation for art. And, and that's the bit that, although I'm not overly familiar with these pieces, which I will go and make myself familiar with, hearing about the appreciation of that art it's just a fantastic thing to witness sorry yawning but yeah interesting interesting so out of the two of them i actually think i enjoyed the chat the first chapter of thunderclap more than i enjoyed the first chapter of doppelganger um but i will continue with both of them they're both on the the short list of the first women's prize for non-fiction so yeah so i'm now up to 21 hours and 36 minutes of reading this weekend and it is just gone four o'clock i've got two hours and 24 minutes of reading left to do oh Lovely. it's summer summer is here we just heard the uh ice cream van go around but what i think i'm going to do because i did promise myself i would do this and i didn't do it yesterday because we were out for the majority of the day um is that now the clocks have gone forward um we've got a little bit of shared space that we share with the flats around us um, which has got a bench on it and i did promise once the clocks went forward um at the end of every day like when i get in from work or when i finish working from home i will go outside and read for a bit just while i've got a cup of tea now, i didn't do that yesterday because we were out and then when we got back it was dark but i will do that today so i think i'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea and go and sit outside and read a little bit more of has anyone seen charlotte salter now i'm thinking maybe this is a bit less likely that i'll get this finished today as i've got two hours and 24 minutes left um, of reading today um but will i get that done 
Maybe not. Maybe not in two hours and 24 minutes. I guess because I've just done a good two hours of listening to audiobooks and doing some cross stitch, which I really enjoy doing. And yeah, feels like I'm going to get it done in time for me and David to watch a film tonight. Any ideas what film you might want to watch tonight, David? Over. Any idea what film you might want to no, watch tonight? No, I'll have a look in a minute. Lovely. I'm going to go and sit outside and read for a bit. Would you like to join me? No, I'm okay. I think it's quite cold. Yeah, like I could put a coat on or something. Okay, no, I'm okay. But you have fun. So I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and go and do that outside. Whilst I'm making a cup of tea, I will return to Doppelganger and um, listen to a bit more of that while I'm making a cup of tea. So, yeah. I'll go and do that. I've only got 33 minutes of reading left, Abby. That's right, you heard right. 33 minutes of reading left. I've just listened to another chapter and a bit, yes, of um, Doppelganger. What did I think of it? I thought it was quite good. Um, it's quite... A hair full of Daphne's fluff. It's quite... Um, I guess it's like a memoir, basically, with of Naomi Klein's life, but also with references to sort of mad thoughts um, well, that I consider mad thoughts that Naomi Wolf had, particularly over the COVID period, and then with other stuff in there about Naomi Klein's previous work. <laughs> but really, David, look how much fluff's coming off her. I know. No wonder there's so much hoovering to do all the time. Um, by the way, since we've moved the stuff around, she's really decided she loves being over there, hasn't she? Look what she's seen. Her little tail's going mad. Um, so yeah, so it's an interesting look. Again, not one I maybe would have picked up, but interesting nevertheless. And then I did this much of the O. So we'll probably finish that O tomorrow. So 33 minutes left. Before you can have your wife back, David. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll go and make myself a cup of tea. And then I think for the last 33 minutes, including that tea making sesh where I'm going to be listening to an audiobook, I will read a bit more of Nikki French. Has anyone seen Charlotte Salter? Feels mad to me now that I was so sure I was going to finish this because I'm, I'm only just halfway through. I mean, there's still quite a lot to have read basically in one day. Um, but I think today has been be uh, has been majority audio booking, which has been fine, enjoyable, if anything. Very rarely do I sort of sit and just um, cross stitch and do audio books because normally it's something on the telly or something like that. Um, but yeah, do you want a cup of tea, David? Um, Are you yeah, doing a bit of work, please. David? No, we're not doing work. What I'm doing? just doing some playlists. What are you making playlists for? Well, I've just updated some. What's the one you're updating called now? At the minute, I'm looking at adding some Disney songs to my ultimate Disney playlist. Isn't he just so cute? And can people follow you on Spotify if they want, David? Um, they can do. What I mean, you call? I think I'll just be David just as I am. Beardy David, if you want just, to go over yeah. and listen to David's newly updated ultimate Disney playlist. My hair, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I don't even know what it's doing. I only washed it yesterday. And I'm not going to wash it again cause I'm, this week because I'm getting it cut on Friday. So I'm not wasting a wash on it, guys. Um, yeah, right, okay. Let's go. Let's get these last 33 minutes done. What do you think, David? Yeah. Let's. Finish! <laughs> High five. <laughs> Kevin, you need to come on screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done it. Well done. What a success. Very I success. mean, so we finished at before seven o'clock as well. I mean, it is easier to spread it over the four days, but we've done quite a lot of socialising as well. So and a lot of socialising. Well man. done me. I have read for 24 hours in the Easter weekend, just as Jesus would have wanted it. That's and I idea. finished four books and have three more on the go. So I'm feeling pretty impressed with myself. I read, first of all, I finished Brotherless Night, didn't I? Then Foster. Then... The May no, then eight lives of a century old trickster, and then the maiden today. And then I've also started. Has anyone seen Charlotte Salter? And I'm like 300 and something, pa 320 pages through that. And I've started two audiobooks Thunderclap, Thunderclap, hey, a Thunderclap, hey, and um, Doppelganger. So well done, me. 
tired, but I'm gonna go make dinner now. And then I can have dinner with my husband. The funny thing is, is that, like once this is all finished, I'm like, yeah, I've done 24 hours. Like I will be read, more. I'm gonna be reading more later because I read before I go to bed every night. I might, no, I might listen to the new Beyonce album while I'm making dinner. I think I'll do that. But yes, thank you for joining me on this uh, very exciting journey. And um, I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye.